Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Rex. I'm Daniel. Word. It was good right up until the word. It's no, like it fell apart. There's, no, there's right. nothing good about that. Yeah. It was like, uh, like you went in one direction, and you then went I went there. in another direction, and then we landed. Awkwardly. Yeah. You know why that's good? Because this was donated by the owner of the company. So oh. it's sort of a ret donated whiskey. So we started the cricket trips early. Okay, this is from Joseph Gildenhoff. Gildenzopf. Gilden and Joe, I'm I'm sorry, man. Gildenhoff. I'm gonna butcher your name every time I try to. Is that a it. Z? Yeah. I don't know if you could put more consonants into this name. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember in Texas we have a lot of communities with Czech and German heritage. And so Joe and his brother uh, founded Oak and Eden Whiskey Company. Right. And what they uh, did was they invented something. Uh, <laughs> that they wanted to try out, which was uh, adding a little more age to a whiskey that they had sourced yeah. by putting in French charred French oak spirals. Oh yeah. Now, if you remember, this sounds familiar. last year this sounds familiar. Last year, we said I can't find anything about these guys. They say they're makers, but right. I'm pretty sure they're sourcing their whiskey. Yes. Reddit, would you find it for us? Yes. That was the very beginning of Reddit for Whiskey Tribe, and they did. They did so well that Joseph called me and was like, hey, so oh, I remember now. He was can like, we talk about the whiskey? He was like, I'm getting yeah. people contacting me every day, yeah. almost every hour. So Joe came, uh, Joe came back in here and we hung out in the vault and we talked. And I told him, look, this is a great story. This is an amazing story. You guys are doing something truly unique. Why are you hiding the fact that you're sourcing? And so uh, they did. that, And now it's still kind of buried on the website, Joe. But it, if you look in the FAQs on the Oak and Eden website, they tell you they don't have a distillery, they are sourcing their whiskey, and they even list the mash bills for the oh, nice. bourbon and the rice. Yeah, yeah. Now this is the, I think, MGP, because it's the MGP 60364 mash bill. So this seems, and I don't know what they're adding into this beyond just the, the no, little no, stave. No, here's what's cool about this one. Because this is a unique one. This stave, if this is what's contributing to this oakiness, mm -hmm. there's oh, absolutely yeah. a rich oak note. Now, here's what I will tell you about Oak and Eden, and I've this has been true of a lot of the distillery friends of mine in Texas. If you try this not knowing what you're getting, right. with no preconceived ideas, right. you will find it a truly wonderful whiskey. Okay, so let's talk about the actual sight, smell, and taste. So oh, the whiskey... You need to know this is a Cabernet wine steeped okay. French There's oak state. Some of the darkness is coming from. Yes. So, because I was going to say, looking at the darkness of this, what you would expect in terms of uh, deep, rich, uh, vibrant flavors, this has that. Yes. Specifically with um, a rich oak note, which you often get in Texas whiskeys. But you say Cabernet? Mm-hmm. Now keep in mind, there's no age statement on this, which, Joe, if you're doing it correctly, means this is at least four years old uh, before you put the stave in it. And by the way, they say that it seems about 60 days that the uh, that charred thing in there changes things. Right. And then it's basically done. Okay. This is interesting. The nose is pretty cool. Because, all right, so this, the rich flavors, when it has a tremendous amount of age, mm -hmm. it usually, and this is going to sound weird, I'm sorry, it usually... First hits me on the front and middle of the palate, and then... Oh, you've tasted it already? Yes. Okay. And then if it's like really got age, then it immediately works its way to the back of the palate. Right. And then you just get to swell. This doesn't work its way to the back of the palate for me. Okay. This, there's richness, but it doesn't go like deep, long, or they like the, the oils or the chains, but... So it feels like a coating of richness as yeah. opposed to a dense, deep richness. Yes. Yes. Let the, me uh, let me try and see if I get the same thing. On the nose, I get all of that high rye MGP mash bill, which is Eleanor's cousin for us. Uh, but there's this sweet. Is that the Cabernet though? Dark, fruity kind of I addition think, to the nose. Yes, I think that's the Cabernet. Yeah, absolutely, it is. I think it's Cabernet. That's definitely showing up. And then that oakiness, that uh, that barrel bitter note, that is a thread in there. You know when it's when wow, it really when is a thread. Whenever something is ancient, though, mm -hmm. you have these rich flavors that well, fall at the back of the palate and then just kind of wrap around. This is there; it's deep and it's rich, but it's like the front and the middle of the palate, and mm -hmm. then you don't get that. You know. So okay, to me, this has 
the dense high rye bourbon middle, mm -hmm. and then it has a coating of sweetness from the Cabernet. Yeah. And then there's a thread of barrel spice bitter that just yes. sort of trails through it, yeah. but never really comes into its own. And then I get uh, kind of, um, kind of, you know, dried cranberries. Mm -hmm. I get like a little bit of dried cranberry in there that may also be coming from the Cabernet. And I mentioned this, this several sweeter. I've mentioned this many, many videos ago, but one of my bigger concerns, the more that we do reviews is the most obvious notes. Mm -hmm. Those completely, it's like, oh, well, you're going to have you know, caramel, brown sugar. You start repeating yourself all the time. You start with repeating all the yourself. Same obvious notes. Yeah, so we, we completely skip over those because, like, well, that's that's to be expected. It's going to be in whiskeys like this, but they are there. And if people are finding a review, and that's the first experience, we still got to go to like the most basic things. So if we're there. saying that, then I would say this is um, dark Luxardo cherries. Ye oh, yeah. Like the cherries we use in our cocktail. Yeah. It's so it's heavier than a maraschino. Yeah. The Luxardo cherry. It's not as candied. It's more of a deep, rich sweetness mm -hmm. than a candied sweetness. But it is sweet. And if you spread it around your mouth and do that Kentucky Chew thing yeah. that we were talking about. And it's it's brown sugar mixed with white green sugar. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh That's just a good whiskey. Yeah, I like it. Right? I dig it. And I mean, they're doing, they yeah. are hoping to start distilling their own stuff, but right now it's all sourced. Well, and what's interesting to me, and this, this actually does please me a lot, because mm -hmm. this wood thing could have easily been a gimmick. Mm -hmm. I think it absolutely makes a difference. Oh, there's no question. Okay. There's no question it makes a difference. All right. I know they said the difference wears out after about two months, it's done making a difference. That was going to be my other question. Yeah, it's not it, forever. Okay, because if this sat on the shelf for 10 years, no. uh, it's not going to well, just... according to what they've found. Okay, all right, fair enough. We got the, uh, we got Red Langford from the subreddit, a question about infinity bottles. What's your feelings about mixing rye and scotch in an infinity bottle? So the entire be point, careful. That, well, here's the thing: the entire point of an infinity bottle is to do some exploration, some experimentation with whiskeys that you already know are your favorite whiskeys. Though rye and Isla, are yeah, yeah, two Smoky whiskeys. Scotch. Yeah, those are two whiskeys that as soon as you put them into an infinity blend, there's notes very often that can totally overwhelm everything else you have going on. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, try it out, but. You may want to try it out, like pour out a little bit of your infinity bottle into something else and then put some drops in there and then... Let me put it this way. We blended 36 whiskeys as a part of whiskey level two. Yeah. And they were all bourbon and rye. Yeah. Right? There was in there one peated whiskey <laughs> and the whole 36 whiskey blend ended up tasting smoky. <laughs> it, it took one <laughs> and 36. Right to take over the whole thing. So uh, we actually did an infinity bottle episode up in here. What a lot of people do is they'll have a couple of different infinity bottles. One where they know this is gonna be some smoky stuff and this mm -hmm. is going to be a lot more, you know, sweet, delicate, nuanced. You want a truly nerdy trick with that? Here's a truly nerdy trick. If you have an infinity bottle and you're wondering if you should add something, mm -hmm. pour an ounce out of the infinity bottle. Okay. And add the thing you're thinking of adding in tiny drops and see what happens. I just said that. Blend it beforehand. That's what I said. In the glass. I said that. I didn't hear that through your words. You don't listen to me. You mumbled. You don't listen to me. Uh, <laughs> we got Calvary797. Cast your vote. Hello, tribesmen and tribeswomen. Whiskey noob here. I will be buying my second ever bottle and I'm looking for votes. Second ever bottle of whiskey. For a moment, I want you to just think back. Right. To the day when you were buying your second ever bottle of whiskey, and did you have this kind of community to call upon to ask questions? I've never bought. He's never bought a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick. Have you ever really? I mean, honestly, have you ever gone to the store on your own and bought a bottle of whiskey? Yes, I get gift cards. Okay, but that counts. Have you gone shopping for a bottle? Well, you, my family members give me gift cards thinking I don't have enough whiskey. So. Okay, so you go and get one. Yeah, get one. All right, yeah. that counts. Yeah. Uh, if you had to pick out one of these as your only bottle, would you choose Monkey Shoulder, Knob Creek, Bullet Bourbon, Four Roses, Buffalo Trace? Oh, one of those. One okay, of I like that he limited it to choices. Yeah, Monkey Shoulder, Knob Creek, Bullet Bour Bourbon, Four Roses, Buffalo Trace. Well, four bourbons and a scotch. Was, yeah, so in the comments below. Two and shots of happy, one <laughs> shot of sad. Monkey Shoulder's been coming up in the tribe for as long as we've had a tribe. Yeah, here's, that was not on purpose. Here's the thing. 
Because I've seen some people speculate that maybe we have some backdoor brand deal. Dude, with I wish, I wish we did. Uh, I don't. Because you know, you know we moved in the needle on the monkey shoulder sales. <laughs> but here's the reason why. The first video that we have on this channel that's ever going to cross a million is the top 10 whiskeys for beginners right. video. And I think the community voted up monkey shoulder as a really good beginner whiskey. Yeah. So the community he, voted on that. We agree. Which, which agree for a beginner whiskey. Now there's a lot of progression that people can do beyond that, but for a beginner whiskey, it's a damn good option. So I would tell him if that's his only scotch in the options, he didn't really give us an option. But if he's gonna pick bourbon, I would say that his next one needed I would to say, be. I, I would say two. Either I would say four roses. I was gonna say either four roses or buffalo trace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right, fair enough. Okay. I think we're doing God's work here. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.